Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 13 in the authentication module titled Broken Brute Force Protection Multiple Credentials Per Request. All right, let's get started. This lab is vulnerable due to a logic flaw in its brute force protection. To solve the lab, brute force Carlos's password, then access his account. We're given the victim's username, which is Carlos, and then a list of candidate passwords. All right, so the target goal over here is to exploit a logic flaw in the brute force protection mechanism to bypass the mechanism and then brute force Carlos's password. Okay, let's access the lab. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is click on my account and then try to log in as the Carlos user. Now I don't have Carlos's password, so I'm just gonna say test over here and click login. And this is the request that is made by the login function. So let's send this to repeater and look at the request. All right, so you could see over here, it's a post method to the slash login endpoint. And if we go down over here, it takes an add JSON string that has the parameters of the request, which is the username, Carlos, and then the password. And this is the password that we gave it. Now, when we clicked on send and we click on render, we see over here that it gave us an error saying invalid username or password. Now we know based on the description of the exercise that this has a brute force mechanism implemented. So if we try this about three or four times, you should get over here that you've been locked out for one minute and then you'd have to wait one more minute before you could log in again. Now we're trying to find the vulnerability in the brute force mechanism so that we could bypass the mechanism and then potentially brute force the user. So what I'm gonna do over here is see if the password parameter over here accepts an array of values instead of just one value. So to do that, let's remove this and then put in our brackets. And then let's say the first one was test. And then let's see if it also accepts test one. And then if it accepts also test two. So over here, instead of passing only one value to the password parameter, I'm passing an array of values and I'm gonna see if it gives me an error or not. So let's hit send. And here we go. So you see that it gave me the error that it's an invalid username or password, but it's a 200 okay message. So that means the request was well formatted and it actually went through and it was processed by the application. So this makes me wonder if I do give it multiple values over here, is it going to check if the password, so if the correct password is one of these values, and if it is, that means it allows me to log in. So that's essentially what we're going to do over here. We've got a list of candidate passwords. So if we go back to the exercise and open this in a new tab, you could see over here, we've got about maybe a hundred passwords to try. And what we're gonna do is we're going to enter all the hundred passwords in this parameter over here and see if the application allows us to log in. Because we know for sure that Carlos's password is one of these passwords. So instead of doing this manually, adding the double quote and then the comma, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a Python script that essentially puts it in this format for us. And then we could just copy the output of the Python script and then put it in repeater. So if we go back over here, you could see in my folder, I've got a passwords.txt document. This is essentially just this list over here, but in a txt folder, we're gonna be reading from this file and then formatting it in a way that is acceptable by the request. And we're gonna do that using a Python script called convert pwd format.py. Okay, so this is gonna be a really simple script. The first thing we're gonna do is print the opening bracket, and then we're gonna say end is equal to an empty string. And the reason we do that is because the print statement will print a new line and we don't want it to print a new line. We want all of it to be in one line so that it's proper format for the request. Okay, so once we print the opening bracket, we're gonna say with open passwords, dot txt and we're reading the file as f then we're going to assign lines to be equal to f dot read lines so we're essentially just reading the passwords dot txt file 
And then we're going to say for PWD in line. So for each individual password, what I want to do is print a double quote and then the password. And from that password, I'm going to strip the new line because that would cause issues with the format. And then I'm going to add a double quote, so the ending quote, and then a comma right after it. And again, we're going to use end is equal to empty string so that it doesn't print a new line after it. So essentially what we're doing over here is if we go back, what we're doing is we're adding this quote and then the password that is in the file and then the end quote and the comma. And so this for loop will loop through the entire thing and then it will end with this comma over here. Now you shouldn't end with a comma when it comes to JSON parameters. And so what we're going to do is um, we're going to add another password. So we're going to print another password, let's say random, doesn't matter what this is, and then close the bracket. And again, we want to end it with an empty string so that it doesn't print a new line. So essentially what this will do is it'll format this entire uh, list over here into a string that looks like this that ends with the password random. So let's save this and then go to terminal, new terminal. And then we're going to say Python 3, convert pwd format.py and hit enter. And here we go. So it essentially took the passwords.txt list and it made it in a format that will be acceptable for the request. So let's copy this. Hopefully it didn't time out. We'll put it in here. So essentially over here, we've got all the passwords. If the application actually accepts an array of uh, parameters or an array of strings, if one of these passwords is Carlos's password, then it should allow us to log in. So let's hit send. And here we go. We get a 302 and it's to the slash my account page. So one of these passwords, we don't know which one, but one of these passwords is the correct password. And notice over here, although we tried, let's say, 100 passwords, we bypassed the brute force mechanism because of the logic flaw in the application. If we had tried each individual password, it would have um, implemented a soft lockout on you every time you tried three incorrect passwords. All right, so let's copy this session ID over here. So this is the authenticated session ID. Let's copy it and then let's follow redirection and see where it takes us. It's another 302 to the login page. So it's not actually allowing us to log in, but we saw that we did get authenticated into the application. So if we go back over here, right click, inspect, go to application and then cookies. And then we change the session ID to the session ID we just copied, which we know is the authenticated one. And then we go to my account. You could see over here, you're actually authenticated as the Carlos user. And, you, and it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability semi-manually and then also semi-scripting a portion of the exploit. Now let's completely script the exploit in Python. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.